Before I get started, please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any new material that I'm going to be producing in the future. And that helps us grow the channel, grow more content, and help people like you. So what we're going to do is compute the uh, SHA-1 digital signature of an HTTP response body. Okay, so uh, there is a site uh, called httpbin.org um, and uh, you, you can do a GET request on it and it will return some kind of a JSON with some data or uh, you can call uh, the gzip and get some uh, gzip data. Right, uh, so you get roughly the same data, but this time it's compressed. So I want to uh, create a method that uh, makes an HTTP request, gets this data, and if it's compressed, uncompress it, and then calculate a digital signature on it. So, okay, this is the idea. So how do we do that? Um, so to know if uh, uh, I'm going to redirect this to, uh, to the now I just want to show you the headers that are coming in. Oh. Uh, okay, so uh, when I get a, something which is compressed, uh, I get an HTTP header. So this is an HTTP response. It starts with a line that says, what is the protocol version, which is 1.1. What is the highest protocol version of HTTP currently? Two. Version two is currently in production in a lot of sites and version three is in the works. Then I get a status code, 200 is okay. And, and then I get a, what is known as the reason, if there was an error. And then I get a bunch of headers. And the header that is interesting for me is the content encoding, which says that this content is compressed with GZ. Right, if I'll do just the get, which is not compressed, uh, you see there's no content encoding here. I'm still getting the header, I'm getting the content type, which is JSON, uh, how many bytes are uh, I'm gonna get, et cetera, et cetera, but um, no uh, content encoding. So, uh, Uh, and we get a uh, return string and a possible error. So we need to import a bunch of, a bunch of things. Uh, to make HTTP requests, we're going to do, uh, we're going to use the net HTTP package. So the net HTTP package is the package that works with HTTP both. There is a server there, there is a web server, a really good one, a really performant one. On my machine, it does, on this laptop, right, it does about um, I was, the, the, I'm sorry, I just realized that the, I somehow muted the, the volume on my machine. So if someone asked a question, I'm really sorry. I didn't hear you. Uh, so HTTP has a HTTP server on my machine. It does about 80,000 requests per second. Uh, and it also has HTTP clients. So a lot, a lot of things with HTTP. Um, and we also, I always forget where I find the GZ, compressed GZ. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and I'm going to import the IO package as well. And uh, SHA-1, which is in crypto, Okay, and, and this is starting to resemble a real Go program, right? Uh, as I said, most of the functionality that, that, that you need is going to be in the, the packages you import. So you have usually a bunch of imports in your code. Okay, so uh, http.get of the URL. And if there is an error, I return and we do the fair resp dot body dot close. Okay, so uh, make the HTTP call and then, and, and now uh, I'm saying that I have a viable IO reader, which is um, the response body. Now the response body, if you look at it, uh, it is if you go to net HTTP, no. Uh, response, where is response, type response. Okay, so this is the response and it has a, a body which is IO reader closer. Uh, IO reader closer is an interface which combines the IO reader interface and the IO closer interface. Okay, so you can also embed the interfaces and construct bigger ones. So the reader has just the read and uh, the closer has just the, the close method. And that's it. So basically two methods that the body need to implement. Yeah. And now, uh, if the response uh, header dot, why don't you like me? So if it's a gzip, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, gzip.new uh, reader of the previous reader. Okay, so uh, when we look at the gzip, um, the gzip package, you will see that the new reader it gets a reader and returns a reader and probably an error. We'll check that. Okay, so it's basically building like a Lego like. So it says, I'm going to read some bytes from the underlying reader. I'm going to decompress them. And then when every, every time you read from me, I return you these uncompressed bytes for you. Um, And if the error is not nil, we're going to return and the error. Okay, so we compose one reader on the top of the other, but once we get to here, uh, I have some kind of uh, IO reader that they can uh, use to do things. So now I want to calculate the digital signature. Okay, so the hash is uh, sha1.new. And this is another uh, pattern that we see in, in Go. If the, the package define only single type, there is no uh, need to call it new SHA-1, right? This is repeatable. So it's just new, that's it. There's a single type. The package name is always before the, the method, the function. So 
we don't need to repeat that. And it implements io.writer. You are very quiet. Am I losing you or are you following along? Following along. Okay, following along. All right. Let me know if I'm losing you. Uh, and now I can use the IO copy function. Uh, uh, to the digital signature with the reader. Okay, so IO copy gets a writer to write into and a reader and it copies everything from the reader into the writer. So we're not actually copying the bytes, right? We're just sending him over to this age, which is a digital signature, which uh, works by updating some kind of an internal state every time you write some new bytes into it. And finally, um, we can return a digital signature as a string. Okay, so I, I can play with these interfaces of reader and writer, and then uh, IO copy doesn't really care. As long as the first parameter implements something that you can write into, and the second parameter implements something that you can read from, it will work. In the same thing, we could have gotten the data from a, from a socket or from an open file. Um, it's just uh, Lego-like things. Um, and let's see if it works. Uh, so, HTTP uh, um, get. And we can do the same thing. Uh, with the compressed one. In both cases. Uh, how do we call it? Ah, data set. FMT, FMT. Okay, and line 44. Oh. Okay, so uh, it worked, right? We got a digital signature both for the uncompressed and the compressed. And the nice thing is that uh, once we pass this point, we can uh, do that.